In this last video of this course, we will have a look at the toggle button, which will allow us to disable or enable all of the fields and buttons associated with a given form. The first thing we need to do is to make sure that every component within our main wrapper component has this disabled property associated with it. And it is associated with is disabled property coming from the form wrapper. Once we've done all this for every single field, we can close our index.blade file. Then if we open our wrapper.view file, we will pass two new methods to our slots. They will be called enable event. And the other one will be disable event. I'm just going to quickly do it this way. So let's create these new, two new methods. So if we scroll down, let's create this enable event. And what it will do is it will just fire the event. So event bus fire disable end it. And we're going to concatenate it with this group. And the other one, disable event, if we just copy it. Disable event, it will be disable started. And the reason why we need both of these methods is because our external buttons, buttons that are not within the form wrapper, wouldn't be able to be disabled because they obviously are only responding to the disable ended and disable started events, but they wouldn't receive is disabled property of this form wrapper. That's why we have to have a way of actually dispatching event, which can obviously distribute the message to all elements associated with the form, whether or not they are within the actual form wrapper. Okay, so now we can save and close our form wrapper. Let's now open our main, actually no, let's go to templates, partials, and we go into the attached buttons. And in a section when we have these button groups, what I'm going to do actually is duplicate this reset button. And let's start, we are going to give it a class secondary. So it's going to be this gray button rather than props reset, we are going to use disable event method, which we just created, and we want to show it only we're not going to have it disabled, we're going to show it uh, v if exclamation mark props is disabled. So only when it's not disabled, show this button. And for the icon font, also, we are going to use fa power off. And obviously, the label will be disabled. And then the other one, which will show when the button, the actually the form is disabled, so it will show when it is disabled, the button will have a color green, so success. And then we will change the label to enable. And what we also need to change is rather than disable event, this time we want to enable it. So enable event. Okay, let's recompile the assets quickly, npm run dev. And if we refresh the page, you can see we have this disable button. If we click it, there we go. It disables all of the uh, form fields as well as the buttons, as you can see. And that works for the external buttons as well. If I re-enable it, it makes all of them enabled again. Okay, so that's all fine for the internal buttons. But what about the detached ones? If we go back to the editor, and if we now close this file, we can open the form buttons detached. One thing that I've noticed is that we've passed the flag disabled as disabled rather than is disabled for consistency, because all other flags are is disabled are named is disabled. Let's just change it. So we go to triggers trigger. And you can see that our render method now passes this as is this is disabled rather than is disabled. So let's just change it to is disabled. Now we're going to have to change it all in this file. So I'm just going to select all of the instances. And let's change it to props is disabled. And I'm also going to do the same thing with multi checkbox. So if we go multi checkbox index, we have the same thing here, it's props disabled. So select all and change it to is disabled for all those triggers. Okay, we can save and close this file. Now let's add these two new buttons to our detached button section. And if I just duplicate this first button here, and let's put these items on new lines, group states, vclock states, fire, we're going to be firing disable started event. And rather than alert button, we're going to have secondary one. So this gray button, 
will show up and trigger. We go into call this trigger method on click and we only going to show it V if, and we have exclamation mark props is disabled. So show this button only when disabled is set to false. And then we don't need this wrapping span, this conditional statements here. We only going to have one label that's going to be FA power off for the icon and the button will say disable. And now if I just copy this entire thing and let's do one for enable, it will fire event called disable ended and it will have successful button, green one, success. Obviously you might have different stars depending on what sort of CSS you are using and then it will only show when it is disabled. Same icon, but the label will be enabled. Okay, now if we recompile the changes that we've done to our trigger, and if you refresh the page, you can see that we have this disable button within our detached buttons, uh, which are outside of the form wrapper. If we click on disable, that disables all of the fields and the buttons associated with the form. But if we click enable, nothing happens. So if you go back to our editor, and I'm going to show you exactly why this is happening. If we open our trigger.view file, you'll see that we are passing the method trigger as the call to the method conditional trigger. And this conditional trigger method checks whether the dis is disabled flag is set to true. And if it is, then it does nothing. And this is obviously the case with our enable button because the trigger is already disabled. That's why when we click, nothing happens. So what we need to do is to add another flag to our properties called always enabled. This way we will be able to specify that regardless of whether the is disabled is set to true or false, you always call the trigger method. So always enabled type by default boolean and it will be by default false. And what we're going to do here is check if this always enabled is set to false. So exclamation mark this always enabled. If it isn't, then return Otherwise, just call this trigger method. And let's now go back to our buttons. And the last thing we need to do here for our enable button after V cloak, let's add this always enabled, set it to true. Okay, if we now save it, let's recompile all the assets. And if we refresh the page now, disable, if we click it, that disables all the inputs and buttons. If we click on enable, that re-enables them. If we ch change it from within the embedded buttons, we can also switch it from within the, the ones that are outside of the form wrapper. Now let's go back to the editor once more. And what we are going to do, let's just disable the form by default. I'm just going to close all of these files. If we go to our uh, main index.blade and let's scroll up to the top. And if we add disabled flag to it. So disabled set to true. You'll see that everything if we save and refresh the page now is disabled by default and we can straight away see the enable button. So if we click it, that enables it, disables again and so on. So as you can see, you can work whichever way you want. You can disable it directly from within the view by just setting it automatically on page load on the form wrapper or just by using the buttons or any other means that you could use within the form some perhaps some other component which disables the, the form and so on. Just make sure that you always use the same group and obviously uh, the event naming is consistent. So this was the last video in the series. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or suggestions, please use the designated comment section.